One Piece Chapter 1007, titled Mr. Raccoon Dog, that's Tony Tony Chopper if you're nasty, is, well, honestly, what it says on the tin. It's all about Mr. Raccoon Dog himself, the Tanuki, who has a degree? Yeah, that works. The Tanuki who has a degree, Tony Tony Chopper, and his exploits to save the various different people who have been infected with the Ice Oni virus by Queen. Now, I feel like it was obvious where this chapter was ultimately going to go, even before, yeah, we knew how this was probably going to go, but that's not a bad thing. The mark of a good writer is to have good setup and a payoff that makes sense. You know, it's not bad to subvert expectations, but if that comes at the price of sensibility, then I'd rather you just go in the obvious direction, if nothing else. So this chapter opens up, uh, Hiogoro just recently took down both the Oniwabanshu and the Mimowari Gumi, which I knew was a thing that happened, but it seemed like he only took down the Mimowari Gumi. I wasn't sure about the Obiwabanshu, but you know, he took down two different groups, like they were straight up fodderized, and... The likes of Apu and Eggstrake are just like, yep, that's the power of the people of Wano. But, you know, Hiogoro, he's starting to convert too much. And because of the power that he has, if he turns full Ice Oni, he will be a terror that destroys the forces of our heroes. But, ultimately, uh, it, they can't bring themselves to end him. You know, they can't, the, um, you know, both Hyogoro and Omasa have been infected and have asked to be executed should they, before they turn. But ultimately, it's just like, the other Yakuza bosses can't do it, you know? Sunogoro and Yap uh, Tapi, you know, they just can't bring themselves to end their allies. It just feels too cruel. Meanwhile, when it comes to the villain's forces, Queen's forces, they're pissed off at Queen. It's just like, dude, what the hell? Why are we suffering from one of our bosses? And Queen does the most stereotypical bad guy thing of just like, you should be honored. You know, I made these ice only bullets, and, you know, they're a masterpiece. You should be honored to die by their hands. But then we get into the real meat and potatoes of just the depths of where Queen is coming from. Because obviously he's just frustrated and it's just lashing out like a petulant child. But he reveals to the pleasures that, hey, you already weren't able to get the power. You're dead weight. You can just die off. And I feel bad for the pleasures. It's just like they thought at least it was honorable that they tried, but they're treated as nothing but fodder at this point. And the waiters, Queen reveals that they have no more shipments of smiles, which we knew was happening because the various different factories and productions were all destroyed between what happened to Caesar. And what happened on Dressrosa? Of course there's no more smile coming in. So of course you can't produce more smile fruit. Meaning that the, you know, the waiters are waiting around for basically nothing. So Queen is just like, you guys can die as well. You know, you might as well be used with my Isoni bullets to just burn out brightly for one fleeting moment. And we can always just find more men. And it's just like, dude, you are so stereotypical villain right here. Like, of course these people are ultimately going to turn on you assholes. You know, and he even blames it. it's just like, I gave you the chance to get the antibodies and you blew it. So you could just lay down and die. So a lot of the gifters and pl uh, the waiters and pleasures are just like, okay, then we'll just have no choice but to cut down our own people. And the samurai are just like, dude, that's, I know they're our enemy, but that's kind of fucked up, bro. And Queen even goes so far as to try to taunt the samurai. It's just like, you guys are waiting around for that raccoon dog to make this stupid friggin' 
vi antivirus, the serum, but he can't do it in such a short amount of time. And not to mention, he's a pirate. He'll probably just cure himself and cut and run. And while a lot of the samurai are trying to dissuade this notion, it's just like, oh, come on, he's a pirate, just like me. He'll stab you in the back regardless. And as Yatape finally gets the courage up to just end Hyogo right then and there, in comes Chopper, and Chopper just blocks it. Like, even his brain point form, he just blocks Yatape, and it just brings forward the question, was Yatapi actually tried or is Chopper just that strong, even in brain point form? But he has the serum, he heals Hyogoro, and he even has Tristan and Miyagi bring out a giant cannon with something called the Chopper Plague Nebulizer that just insta-cures everyone with, by spreading this massive mist all over the hall just insta-curing everyone right there, right then. And of course, Queen is like, what did you do to my wonderful virus? And Chopper's just like, well, I couldn't really just make a cure, so I made a virus of my own, a virus that would attack your virus. And it's just like, well, shit, Chopper, you clever little bastard. And, you know, Queen is just like, but how do you have that kind of skill? And Chopper's just like, well, our crew kind of went all over the place for training for this kind of stuff, so, you know, it kind of just happened. And Queen is just like, one more question, one more thing, why would you cure my men as well? And Chopper, being the good doctor that he is, it's just like, because viruses shouldn't be used as a weapon. Viruses grow out of control. Oh my god, this is so topical. I swear to god, it feels like Oda was just like, Hey, with this whole virus situation, and why don't I just include something like this? Just like, you don't spread a virus, they rage out of control, and don't conform to your ideals and expectations. You can't control something like this. It was always going to become more of a problem than you could handle. And Queen's just like, what the fuck? Fuck him, don't you lecture me. And he opens up his mouth and just, you know, tries to gun down Chopper. And interestingly enough, in come the pleasures who shield Chopper with their own bodies. And it, Queen's just like, what the hell? Get out the fucking way. And the pleasures is just like, no, fuck you. You tried to friggin' kill us. Yeah, we might as well go down fighting trying to save someone who didn't treat our lives like they were disposable. And they all turncoat. Like, all of the men there turncoat. And again, it's something I predicted previously. Of course, this was going to happen. You know, it was such an easy to see setup. But at the same time, it it was the same thing with Tama coming in and just taking over all the gifters. So essentially, Tama, Nami, and Usopp have managed to change over pretty much all the gifters, which is why we kept being introduced to those gifters over and over again. And Chopper, in one fell swoop, managed to turn over uh, the majority of the pleasures and the waiters, meaning that the greater majority of Kaido's forces basically just turncoated right there and then. Like, a good chunk of Kaido's forces just turncoated. Which, again, is, you know, CP0, we're making the claim, it's just like, oh, they have so many numbers that it wouldn't matter what the... You know, rebel forces tried, they'd still be outnumbered, but those numbers are looking pretty good at this point. And Marco, Marco comes in and restrains Queen, and Marco tells Chopper, all right, take this guy down. And Chopper is just like, oh, thanks so much, Marco. Also, one more thing to all of you. I'm not a raccoon dog. And he full on goes monster point and slaps Queen in the face. Like full force, open palm, bitch slaps him. And everyone, we're talking Marco, the pleasures, and the Yakuza bosses, even Egg Strike just look on like, oh, I'm 
so sorry. <laughs> they full on, it's the first time anyone outside of the crew or people who were just fighting the Straw Hats, specifically Chopper, really realized that, oh, this, this creature is not just some raccoon. Like, he's a full on monster. Oh, that was such a great moment. We then cut over to Yamato as he's trying to escort Momo and Shinobu out of there. But, you know, when uh, Yamato asks Momo if he's okay, he reveals that he just hates his how he is. He feels weak, he feels foolish, he feels stupid. But Shinobu tries to tell him that he's brave. But Momo, you know, he ends up reverting into his dragon form within Yamato's clothing as well. You know, saying, I'm not brave, I'm, you know, I'm weak. He's, he's really going into crisis mode here. But then we cut over to CP0 in a, what's called the guest parlor. And they think back to... You know, their leader, for some reason, waxes about when the Navy managed to actually ca capture Kaido. Because we've heard about that. He'd been captured before, poked, prodded, stabbed, all that good stuff. And apparently they had actually extracted some of his blood, trying to find something out about his bloodline. And they created the artifi first artificial devil fruit through that by Dr. Vegapunk. So the fruit that uh, Momonosuke had eaten was actually used from extracting DNA from Kaido himself, which is kind of wild. Apparently, it was considered a failure by Dr. Vegapunk, and he stored it away, which makes me think that he lied, because he didn't want that getting out to the world government. But he kept everything under wraps, and he thinks to himself, it's just like, okay, so Punk Hazard was destroyed, the fruit must have been blown up as well. But... You know, he thinks it's just like, thank goodness it was a failure, which makes me wonder, you know, are they thinking that if it wasn't a failure, that that would have caused an even greater issue, or saying if it wasn't a failure, they'd have to kill Dr. Vegapunk for lying to them. I I'm curious as to where this guy is going with that line of thought. And since Momonosuke does have the fruit, what's going to happen to Momonosuke? Oh, I really do have to wonder, what is that building up? Because that's definitely important. But the really important part, ugh, the finale of this chapter, we see the scabbards, we see that they've been bandaged up and helped, and helped for the most part, but they're just like, okay, we don't know who helped us, but... We gotta get to Luffy's group, they're dealing with Kaido, we have to go up and help. But then the door suddenly opens, and who should step through but none other than Odin himself. Which, of course, freaks out all the scabbards, but at the same time I'm just like, no, it can't be Odin. Because one thing, he has both of his swords. You know, he has both of his swords. So, no, it can't be him. It definitely can't be Odin. But I'm really wondering, then, who is it, though? Like, really, it really does have me wondering. There's something, something that's not right about this. Either they're seeing the visage of someone else, possibly, possibly, I think it's Hiyori, and they're just mistaking her for Odin in their, her bravery or something like that. Something is up here. It can't just be Odin. Like, that would really just diminish his sacrifice, if nothing else. Like, I just, I really can't see this just be Odin. And I have to reiterate this, because I feel like that'll be a thing that comes up and like, oh, it's Odin, it's Odin, it's Odin, it's Odin. And we're on break next week, so it's just like, of course the speculation is just gonna be running rampant. But again, it can't be Odin. Like, we saw him get shot in the head. You don't die like that, and it just be like, like, oh, Odin has shown up again. No. No. And it can't be Mr. Two. So, who is it then? It, 
and why would they appear like this? Maybe, possibly, Hiori has some illusion-based ability? Something along those lines? It's really tough to tell. But please, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think this manifestation of Odin truly is? Also, what do you think about the whole situation with Momonosuke's Devil Fruit? Why does the CP9 member think that it was good that it was a failure? What's going to happen to Momo? And what did you think about... Chopper bringing the gifters and the no the pleasures and the waiters over to his side Did you see it coming or were you actually shocked? I'm very interested to find out But tell me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below do all that YouTube stuff at the end of the video or don't It's all up to you and until next time I've been Deuce this Zen and I will see you later. Bye. Bye